Elena Chani from Switzerland, and she's going to talk about an actionable training from competency model to observable behaviors while empowering communication. So, Elena, the floor is yours. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. So, I am Elena. And I'm Sonia, I'm the head of the uh, neuroscience at Like Like in Switzerland, which is the company that actually makes uh, skill team training. First of all, I would like to share with you a quick video to let you understand a little bit better what we're talking about. It may be useful. So it's a quick video of presentation of skill team. Conversations are the moment when potential turns into collective energy. It's the 20% factor of a leader making the 80% of the difference in team results. Humans are not comfortable with conversations, which is why we refer to them as critical. They involve emotions, different opinions, and high stakes. Not at all easy. That's one of the reasons why many leaders end up having few conversations with their employees. And this certainly has a negative impact on productivity and team's morale. In order to improve on conversational skills, it makes good sense to take a course in communication, but it's not enough. Like in sport, what really makes the difference is practice. The more you practice, the more you gain confidence and raise your self-awareness. Your comfort zone starts to expand as soon as you move the first step toward trying and trying again. Practicing by interacting with stories is the best way to improve. Stories give us the ability to share emotions. And since decision-making is emotional, stories are critical. It's how we can share purpose and values. This is why we've created Skill Gym. Skill Gym is digital role-play solution where, instead of sitting in front of a trainer to practice conversations in real time, you can schedule your self-paced training according to your needs and time availability. Our library is designed to support leaders of today and leaders of tomorrow with an ever-growing set of stories, presenting a broad range of situations to practice with. Skill Gym is an interactive video. No puppets, no avatars. Human beings come alive in a seamless experience where you are totally immersed in the situation. Thanks to our AI algorithms, you can feel their emotions, see their hesitations, hear their whispers, each actor has his own personality and a story carefully designed to make you feel like he is one of your people. The simulation is played in real time with no pauses or freezes. Everything that happens is entirely influenced by the way you play. At the end of each simulation, you are asked to self-evaluate your performance and this will provide you with a great insight about your self-awareness, which is the most important starting point to grow. Then, an emotional and highly impactful direct and unbiased feedback comes directly from the character telling a friend about the conversation you just played, to make the right side of the brain work. Finally, you can turn actions into sharp metrics to quantify the results of your performance, monitor your progress, and define metric-driven follow-up strategies. This is where you can also review your conversation with the help of augmented reality to highlight best practices, body language, and many more triggers of performance. No matter how busy you are, Skill Gym will adapt to your agenda and it will help you staying consistent with your practice scheduled thanks to our adaptive booking system. Practicing will make you feel like you have done that next real-life conversation before. I know what to expect in that conversation is the most common comment from leaders practicing with Skill Gym. I just share this quick video because I really hope it helps understanding what I'm talking about, what I will be talking about for the next uh, uh, 20 minutes at least. So I'm going to share the screen again. Just tell me if everything works fine. Okay. So uh, the main. Okay, um, 
I would say that the main point of the presentation today is talking uh, about why and how we built this training to put into actual behaviors, to put into practice, uh, uh, competency model, and why did we choose to uh, empower communication for doing this? Um, so, by fa facing the current realities in organizations, uh, we have to admit that unfortunately, the traditional learning tools don't work anymore. Indeed, there is a big gap between theories about capabilities and competencies and skills and actual behaviors. So as uh, the Harvard Business Review in 2019 just found out, skills and capabilities developed don't find practical applications on the job anymore. So people know a huge amount of theories, a huge amount uh, of theories about uh, competency, about skills that they're supposed to have, but how to put them into actual behaviors, how to put them um, into practice. I'm sorry, I don't know if I'm working. Uh, into practice. And why this is happening? Because organizations don't always benefit from leadership development. Indeed, organizations need used to spend a lot of money to train people, and usually those people don't stay in the organization long enough to benefit from it. And then providers aren't developing the needed skills, maybe the needed soft skills. And finally, it's also very difficult to apply to real world what has been learned in, in classes. So we just asked ourselves, uh, uh, what kind of impact personal abilities have in this process? And literature actually has many answers to us. Studies by Carnegie Institute of Technology show that 85% of one's financial success arises from personal skills and ability to lead people, which is also uh, something very known, very well known, thanks to uh, Goleman's emotional intelligence theory, because for him, Communication and the ability to communicate efficiently is one of the essential skills to have in the workplace. So starting from this, uh, this concept about uh, personal abilities, we just tried to build a book with two specific purposes. We wanted to, we have been driven, we have been driven by two huge and interrelated needs. First of all, we needed a structured system with measurable patterns. Because a training, a learning method to be valid, we need to identify and to measure evolution over the time. We needed to measure improvement over the time. And then we wanted to bridge the gap between theories about capabilities and specific daily behaviors, the gap I was just talking about. Indeed, in literature, only genetically actionable behaviors have been defined, and no standards of behavioral approaches are available to help in differentiating why someone has a superior performance at job. So our purpose was to, um, to, pro to provide a, a training with practical insights. With practical insights. And as you can see, all those images are uh, different scenarios and different interfaces uh, from SkillGM. And we wanted to enable trainees to practice skills, to practice the needed soft skills directly 
in real life situations, in real life scenarios, but to practice them safely. So uh, to feel free to try new strategies, to make mistakes, to learn without negative implications that of course you will have trying a new strategies talking with your boss, for example, in real life. So what is it? What are we talking about? Skill team is an intelligence, artificial intelligence driven, interactive, digital role play game. And uh, it helps trainees to practice a wide range of crucial skills directly connected to the real world. And thanks to this training, capabilities can be recognized as actual ways to orientate behaviors at workplace. So capabilities can be translated into actual behaviors, not just as juridical frameworks to aim towards. It has many advantages because it's easy, it's on demand, everyone can practice it on their own devices. And we have many different scenarios, so many different situations to practice and many different characters. And I would like to point out that each character has its own personality to deal with. So each character and each scenario make a different match, different mix to interact with and to practice. But let's take a, a deeper look into the method of architecture. So the training has built a two slides behind me. The training has been built starting from competency model and from capability. But what is it? What is competency? What does it mean? Uh, in reviewing the literature about this topic, I would say that two points immediately pop out. A significant amount of literature and a wide range of meanings are attributed to this term. To go straight to the point, I will say that uh, the word is strictly related to behaviors in the workplace environment and what kind of specific outcomes these behaviors have to lead to a superior performance in a job. And of course, consequently, competency model may be defined as a behavioral job description that must be defined by each occupational function and each job. Why? Why did we choose um, to use, to start from competency model to build up this training method? Because it has many advantages actually. It helps enhancing the recruiting process, uh, to enhance employee development, management performance, and to identify training needs. It also helps the unification of corporate culture across business units, because it helps the connectivity through integration of HR processes and everyone's expectations for success. So it's very useful in companies and organizations. But there are many models actually, and we choose a multidimensional approach. As suggested by Ladeis, it is a comprehensive, holistic typology of competency model that includes functional, cognitive, social, and meta competencies. So I will say that our competency model, our capabilities, uh, it's a kind of umbrella term 
and it involves skills, work habits, personal abilities, attitudes, behaviors, and I would say that it has everything it's needed for um, a working environment for which is human centered because it takes into consideration different aspects of human being at work. So we started from uh, the selection of four areas of empowerment. So what areas of empowerment can be covered uh, by this training method? We have four of them, which are lead, inspire, share, and serve. And each one of these um, has two capabilities to balance the fulfillment of the need to improve oneself, so to get, and to support others' improvement, so to keep. So starting from these four areas, we have now eight key capabilities. So two for each area. But as I just said, we needed to, to bridge the gap between capabilities and actual behaviors. So we needed to integrate capabilities guilt and behavior and how we just started from behavioral model of competency so i would say that searching in literature there is a general agreement about some fundamental skills required yeah you're with me now required and uh, yeah, I mean, let's just get to more ancient literature and let's just say that for a human centered approach in organization, uh, already back in the 50s, uh, literature pointed out that a manager should show concern for people, trust, sympathy, and empathy. And up to now, up to official findings, and he pointed out where that six skills were essential with their associated behaviors for an effective people project manager to function. And they were understanding behaviors of others, be able to lead, to support, to influence, to inspire with visions and charisma, and probably manage conflicts, and be aware of cultural differences. So I will say that we took inspiration from all this uh, body of literature to build up our method. And uh, how would we integrate capability, skills, and behaviors? So basically for each area, we have two capabilities. And for each capability, we associated different skills. And then we associated different grades of observable behaviors to each skill. So this way, different grades of observable behaviors are that directly represent measurable expressions of selected skills. So we have a directly connection and we can measure this different grade of observable behaviors that can express a specific skill. And behaviors, we have a full level scale of observable behaviors associated to each skill. And uh, it's the levels are unskilled, overused, killed, and talented. I'm, I'm just waiting for you to, because that, that's a kind of you know, technical issue, so, okay. 
So unskilled. When a user shows an unskilled behavior, we are usually at the stage where there's a lot of lack of proficiency and the user is not even aware of it. And as an example for the skill, ask questions. This level is associated with being aggressive. And then we have overused. So typically this is applicable for users who start understanding that the direction that the conversation should take without the ability to handle it properly yet. So it has been noticed that at this stage, at this level of behavior, uh, people tend to over -behave. So for example, for the skill, ask questions. Um, the behavior could be uh, being confusing. So the user is asking too many questions to the character altogether confusing. Then we have skilled, and for example, to the skilled ask question, this level may be associated with barely open to listen. So you understand that you should be open to listen to listen the other, but you're not completely open yet. And then we have talent, which is of course uh, the higher level of behavior. And for example, for the skill ask questions, this level is associated with being genuinely interested in understanding. So a skill, uh, a skill can be uh, can be expressed throughout different level of behaviors according to the expertise level of the user. Let's let's do another example. Maybe it's going to be easier for you to understand. If we have the skill encourage dialogue advancement, different grades of behaviors can be associated to this skill. For example, you ask precise questions to involve the other, or you are commanding an issue. And to translate this into conversation, into part of dialogues, for example, if you say something like, uh, Bill, what makes you feel that you will not make a good mentor for Amy? You are encouraging dialogue advancement, being uh, precise and asking questions to involve the other. If you say, Bill, we have spoken about how Amy needed your help. I expect you to give a hand and mentor her. Your behavior is being commanding and pushy. So your behavior is expressing this skill and great style of advancement at different grades. And they are measurable. Why did we just bring our conversations? Why did we just uh, conversations? I will say that right now, in this particular trial moment for organizations, they really need to, uh, people really need to be flexible, need to quickly adapt to challenges, to changes. And I will. Elena, sorry to interrupt you. Just wanted to tell you that it's uh, five minutes to go for you. Yeah, I finished. So, sorry. That's fine. So we just choose emotional intelligence in organizations as model, which is a model that includes emotional elements, emotional intelligence, and Boyatzi's competencies. And uh, we do believe that our training matter not only empower communication skills, but doing this communication is related to the way the competencies are expressed and how they can be empowered. So we have this competency model with capabilities, skills, and behaviors expressed through how conversational dialogues and while empowering your conversation, your communication skills, you're not only empowering your capabilities and all the competency model, but you're also empowering your emotional intelligence 
which is something that it's quite useful and quite, I mean, helpful in this society. So in conclusion, I will say that this training is an actionable training that allows to measure improvements over the time and bridge the gap between theories and actual behaviors. And it allows to put into practice actual behaviors directly related to capabilities and to skills at work. And thank you. And I would like to thank uh, Andrea Laos as well. And it's not here for his contribution. Thank you very much, uh, Elena. Super interesting talk, super interesting topic, and we would need another hour at least uh, to discuss it further. Uh -huh. I'm wondering, are there any questions? Um, anyone? And uh, your well, I'd have a question. Your target group is it people from business companies or nonprofit sector or students? Okay, so at least I'm back on stage. I'm sorry, we are really struggling here with some technology and it seems we have lost uh, Elena also 